This movie, man. Thank God it's in black and white. When I did The Human Centipede, I was facing a demon. That movie messed me up. It was shocking, it was brutal, it was extremely juvenile. I thought reviewing it, forcing myself to sit through it a few more times would purge the demon. I also made an offhand remark, 2,000 views and I'd do the sequel. 6,000 views later, and <laughs> here we are. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. The demon is back, and this time he brought friends. 100% medically inaccurate, The Human Centipede 2. First, the sequel does something I really hate. It turns the previous movie into a movie in this universe. So in a way, it's not a sequel. Maybe I could call it a reboot or an anthology? Our main character is Martin, an asthmatic and mentally challenged security guard, played by Lawrence R. Harvey. He's an odd little guy who loves the first movie, which technically becomes the only movie since the sequel doesn't exist in this universe. What if this sequel exists in this universe too? So at some point he would be watching himself like in Spaceballs. Is any of this making sense? Martin works at a parking garage in the UK, and taste in movies aside, you can already tell there's something off about him. He really loves The Human Centipede. He seems to watch it over and over. But to him, it's not just fine cinema. It's research. He wants to build one of his very own. And it's not unlike me watching Adam Savage build his own Han Solo blaster than me wanting to build one of my own. But like director Tom Six, he wants to do it bigger than the last one. Instead of three people, Martin plans 12. Working in a car park gives Martin a seemingly endless source of victims, which he starts gathering right away. Fuck her real good. So go home and fuck mom now, you demented dog. Oh! <laughs> oh boy. This kind of work is going to need a large workspace. So he scores a killer deal on a large warehouse. Killer, get it? Because he kills the landlord. Oh god, this movie. He also lives with his mother, played by Vivian Bridson. I didn't expect Martin to be an avid scrapbooker. Can't you just picture him in line at Michael's? And here's where we get a little bit of backstory on this guy. His mother blames Martin for his father being sent to prison for physically and sexually abusing him as a child. Martin's psychiatrist, played by Bill Hutchins, is also pretty awful. But at least his little centipede understands him. I named him Leggy. He gathers more participants. The movie already starts with them having one dude in a surprisingly roomy and soundproof van. The victims are mostly people who just happen to come to this parking garage, which must not be very busy for nobody to hear the screaming or see blood all over the place. Not to mention, no one finds the screaming toddler locked in a car after Martin takes his parents. He also has this horrible neighbor who plays music too loud and gets violent if anyone complains. He can't stand it anymore! Oh, bitch threw him under the bus! Mama finds a scrapbook and is understandably shocked. Why can't you watch porn like everyone else? She rips up his book and this is almost sad. Look at him just standing there. You kind of feel a little bad for him. But he draws the line at messing with Leggy, so he destroys his mother with a crowbar. But let's get that neighbor in here. You knew this was coming. He needs one more for his 12 person centipede. But he has someone special in mind. Ashlyn Yenny, who played Jenny from the first movie. She plays herself as an actress here, so getting her over here was as easy as offering her an audition with Quentin Tarantino. I cannot believe I am here auditioning for a Quentin Tarantino film. So now he's got 12. It could be worse. Could be an actual Tarantino movie. It would be four hours long and a lot bloodier. He's got the Human Centipede playbook and he's running it play by play. Martin has blueprints, his movie reference, and the tools. What? No melon baller or fish scaler? But he does bring the anesthesia. So much brain damage. Seems he was too rough and killed the pregnant woman. He sets her aside. You know what's coming. 
The tension is pretty awful at this point. I haven't been able to make a fist in the last half hour. Now I'm in permanent karate chop hands. First he cuts the knee ligaments. Then he knocks out their front teeth with a hammer. Is this what you want? This segment is brutal, visceral, and a little too drawn out. He tries Dr. Hyder's buttock skin flap technique, but he cuts too deep and bleeds out his patient. See what happens when you don't study? So he improvises with duct tape and staples. He's finished, and it's a little crude. Ultimate. <laughs> I need a minute. Ultimately, his centipede is 10 people long with Ashlyn in front. Pfft, celebrities, always cutting to the front of the line. He tries feeding, but that goes about as expected. So he tries force feeding with a funnel. Things aren't quite, uh, moving. So when sensual massage doesn't work, he tries a super laxative, which is too powerful. So powerful, it blasts color back into the movie. That color is brown, you get the idea. <laughs> Let's just say he would make a bad plumber. The next time someone asks me to explain trickle-down economics, I'll just show him this scene. <laughs> After that finale, Martin wraps his junk with barbed wire and rapes the poor woman at the end position of the, of the centipede. Man, this is this movie. It's just too much. The pregnant lady, who turns out isn't dead, is in fact going into labor. She runs out of the room, her water breaking everywhere, and she gets into the landlord's car left out front. She gives birth while Martin's trying to get at her. <sighs> and she gets away, killing her baby in the process. <sighs> wow, I need a minute. Um, cat time. <laughs> While Martin is busy, the neighbor, who is positioned in the center of the centipede, rips himself free. <laughs> Martin is, of course, pissed all his work is going to hell. Which is kind of a shame, since things were going so smoothly until now. So, and he starts killing off the centipede a segment at a time. Ashlyn momentarily fights back, but all it does is free Leggy. Ashlyn's the only one left. And he pauses. No, you cannot have an autograph. Bollock punch! I guess you need to fight with what you have. So while he's down, she grabs the funnel, leggy, and you can see where this is going. She Richard gears that critter right up the tailpipe. Didn't they do this on Jackass? Why did I eat so many crickets? He kills Ashlyn, and that's the end of the centipede. We cut to Martin, sitting back at his station, looking normal as if we're back at the beginning of the movie. Was it all a dream? A sick fantasy? Normally, I hate it when movies do that, but in this case, it would be a relief. Can I just walk away knowing this was all in his head? Maybe, if only you didn't hear that child still crying in that car. Whew. That was the Human Centipede 2 full sequence. And I need a drink. Martin was a product of a horrible upbringing and an abusive household, caught in a dreary, painful existence. Other than a few guttural sounds, Martin has no dialogue. His posture, his blank stare, his actions all convey what you need to know. He's a broken individual, scurrying from scene to scene like a little bug. Early on, you almost sympathize with him when you learn his story, but then the crazy train rockets right past that. He's a hard character to watch. He's gross, animalistic, inhuman at times. He seems to have the mind of a child, but he's so fucked up that empathy becomes impossible. Hearing this guy interviewed calmed me down a bit, and I remembered he's just an actor. Still, I have to admit, he gives it his all. Martin is a villain, but most of his victims antagonize him at some point, almost to justify them being victimized. The only victim he seemed to pick specifically was Ashlyn, probably because Johnny Depp was busy. Also, Dr. Heiter in the first movie was at least a surgeon. He had the technical skill. This guy works in a car park, and he probably never ever set foot in a Holiday Inn. And he masturbates with sandpaper. He likes it rough. It's done purely for cheap shock value. Let's take the most upsetting image and make it worse. This whole movie feels like a triple dog dare. 
There's a lot of bug imagery. Even Martin reminds me of a cockroach. And I think his mother is suicidal, just as miserable as Martin. Kill us both! I'm begging you! She even tries to kill him at one point, but fails. And he's just like, good night, mother, and goes to bed. Maybe she needs a hobby like her son. The feel of the sequel is a lot different from the first sequence. It's black and white, of course, to slip things past the censors, but this also gives the movie a dreary, nightmarish tone. Every frame is horrific. The first half of the movie looks almost like a low-budget indie film. It's almost artsy. Yeah, that shit don't last. First sequence was gross, but also a lot happened mercifully off-screen. Your brain filled in the blanks just enough to make sense without overloading your sensibilities. Unless your brain is an asshole. Director Tom Six said he wanted to give the audience more of their favorite stuff from the first movie. And he did. As a kid, have you ever been caught smoking by your parents? This is the movie making you smoke the entire pack at once. You like three people? Here's twelve. You like blood? Let's watch tendons getting cut. You like pooping? Let's spray it at the camera. It's like a cinematic middle finger. There's no attempt at social commentary, moral repercussions, or any of the typical horror tropes. There's no character development. Big shock, right? The movie literally ends where it starts. There's no real payoff. The centipede dies and it just ends. And the unsettling, gross, and despicable imagery makes the movie feel twice as long. 1B. It's more of the worst parts of the first movie. It's dreary, it's dark, it's unsettling, it's a non-stop assault. It's a snuff film capped by the most vile poop joke I have ever seen. It took a lot to sit through this movie. I still can't make a fist. The things I do to grow this channel. That being said, if this gets 10,000 views, I'll do part three. There isn't a part four, is there? Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, and comment. You know, all that stuff. This is a newbie. And I'll see you later, kids. I need a drink. Toodles.